I'm going to bring a couple more um, ideas to the table about silver, some common sense things. And, uh, yeah, I'm totally aware of, like, the pump and dumpers and all that type of stuff. And actually, I'll tell you some of our big serval silver heroes up there in, uh, you know, after the fact I picked this up that they sold silver right at the high, you know, April 28th, 2011, you know, Morgan and Sprott. And then Sprott sold again back in April and uh, September before it crashed again. You know, in the meantime, we're getting a bunch of advice. Hold, hold, hold. It's going to 100. Yeah, I heard that garbage, and I'm very much aware of it. Now, I know um, you'll never hear this from the silver crowd and the millionaires that silver's in a bubble and it's going to crash. Well, some of them are saying that right now. I personally think the correction period is getting near an end. And uh, a few things are coming up, like I stated, with the bond bubble. That, I think, is legit. Now, the one guy I always listen to a lot is Mark Faber. But you know where Mark Faber made money? It's by doing what the regular people didn't do. You know? Where people, in other words, all the experts didn't go to. And I've seen so many times experts don't know. Now, I've been in the accounting field a long time, but... I always work for very aggressive entrepreneurs, but, you know, I got that mentality. I can easily work for the banksters, no problem. I mean, I can easily do that myself. I have that mentality all the way. Now, I want to point out something a little common sense, though, in favor of the silver gold crowd. You know, back in 2000 or 2001, you had you said to a financial advisor, I'm going to dump all my money into gold and silver. Every single one of those financial advisors, institutional advisors, they can, you know, be Series 7s and all this type of stuff, CPAs and everything else there is out there. Been in business 35 years. They would all tell you you're freaking nuts for doing that. Actually, even Mark Farber would tell you it's doing nuts for that. Because you really don't know at the time. 2020 vision is going backwards, not going forward. But you would have made a hell of a lot of money if you did that. And actually, you can make a hell of a lot of money in commodities. But most people with a lot of money avoid them, especially silver. They avoid silver like crazy because it's all over the place. It's not just because of what happened in 1979. It's just not... It's called the devil's metal for a freaking reason. It's dangerous. And uh, it is dangerous to put a lot of money into silver. I know there's people... I, Well, <laughs> I got money in palladium. And, you know, I'll play it that way. But I got reasons for doing it. It's not just hopes. It's not just fantasies. And it's not just fundamentals. And I know there's a damn turn down going on. And I still have in the back of my head that silver can go below 26 solidly. I don't think it's going down to 20, and I don't think it's going down to 21, 15, and it's going to bounce around and stay there for a year. But uh, it can go down a little further. But I see a lot of solid things coming up. That bond bubble is one. Debt crisis, raising the debt, politics bickering back and forth about... And, you know, there'll be a lot of stalling right up to the last minute because right up to the default date, they did that last year. They could, they'll do it again. I know it. You see, this is why I work with the, yeah, you won't believe the kind of people I, I don't want to, you know what? I'm worse than them. I'm more aggressive, too. I made them the money, so I don't want to bother with those shitheads. I hope they lose their money. I hope they get put all their money in U.S. government bonds and it goes to nothing. I want to make money. I'm not interested in actually saving the middle class. And I tell you, commodities ain't the way to save the middle class. Long run, the middle class is going to get slaughtered with silver and gold. The people in it right now, you're going to be fine. Because even though it's been up a lot for 10 years, it's got a lot more to go. Now, I also want to point out something a little more common sense. I know during wars, commodities tend to really take off, right? I know way back when it didn't count that much with gold. Well, it didn't count at all with gold because it was the dollar was pegged to gold. But you also got to look at the global situation. What happens in countries where the war doesn't go right? 
or all of a sudden their power is diminished? What happened to their currency relative to solid commodities that are actually um, important like silver and you know monetary things like gold? What happened to their currency compared to those two metals? They really got, their fiat currencies got slaughtered. Just looking at the history of the United States is not a perfect example because look at what happens to a country that is on a losing side of the equation or has its power diminished by conflict. This might be a situation of the United States. And, you know, I could see that, you know, there's a number of powers out there. You know, actually, it's like four main powers. I always like this little thing that Zeranowski said. Um, the four main powers in the world that really count and are vying for power, and that's the U.S., Russia, uh, Europe, and China. Of course, they, he puts Russia first. And, uh, you know, it looks like right now, even though our elite in the United States, Council on Foreign Relations and all that type of stuff, want the Eurozone held together, they'll hammer it down just to keep the dollar afloat. And similarly, um, Russia is going to actually use, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to get involved in a conflict in the Middle East, but I think the Middle East conflict is pretty much a given, and that's going to be extremely bullish for gold and bad for the economy, and it's going to cause more QE because the oil price is going to go up. That's what I think. That's I think that's how it's going to play out. But when that happens, I know Russia is going to make more money on the oil and stuff, but it's going to be great, great propaganda for them all the way. There's a number of sudden death things that can happen that can not like totally wipe out the dollar, but devalue it quite a bit. And the world opinion is actually seems to be turning against the United States and the Western powers. So like when this war or whatever comes up with Iran, I know Russia's going to use that to great effect for propaganda. Despite them smiling to the bank all the way, making money off of raised oil prices on a global market. I mean, I, they're not going to give a shit. I know they won't. But um, the only way you make money is the risk, is risk, you know. People put out a lot of, you know, people made a lot of money and they put everything they had in this stuff that a lot of people wouldn't do. That's exactly how they are all the time. I swear to God, you know, people don't realize this because they haven't been around the people that have serious bucks. Their ass could be on the line for freaking five hundred million dollars, and yeah, they're multimillionaires, but they might be on line on the line for a personal loan, personally signed for loans for five hundred million dollars, which can freaking totally bust them. You know, a lot of people wouldn't do that shit if they had twelve million dollars, or in the case, a couple. There's a lot of people that wouldn't do that shit. They would just say, "Oh, I got money, yeah, it's party." Now these people got an insatiable hollow appetite so the only way you do make money is risk and it's really generally on capital gains not shoveling shit so I'm just watching out for what the hell these silver you know one reason I think silver and gold right now is pretty safe is because all the silver and clowns and gold clowns that pump all this and I'm not saying it's a bad investment but they're all shut up right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, wondering if, I'm about the only one out there on YouTube selling, saying it's a good investment right now. And it's been constantly saying it because I, could, I think it is. You know, if I saw, you know, I don't give a shit what these people do. If they want to go ahead and keep their bonds right now, a lot of people are sitting smug with bonds. Oh, yeah, the stock market's unsafe. I'm in bonds. I'm like, screw you. You know, I tell them, I, you know what, I don't even want to tell these people what to do anymore. I tell them once in a while. But there's a lot of stuff I told them that would have been up triple, quadruple on their money, and they thought I was on crack back then. Well, screw them. That's the way I look at it. Screw them. Right now, I think gold and silver, even though it might pull back a little further, if you had all your money in bonds and you took it out and you put it in gold and silver right now, year or two you're probably going to be way the hell up I think the problem is with people in gold and silver they're afraid to part with it and take fiat money now, obviously the game is you know what nobody with a lot of money sits on a lot of 
fiat money. Like just pure cash. Nobody does. You know, there's income generating ventures and like rental incomes and all this kind of garbage and capital gains that you're speculating on. There's money tied up all over the place. There's all kinds of things going on. They don't have most of their money just sitting in the bank and account someplace. That's just they just have money to keep operationals going and everything else is invested. Yeah, sometimes it's with large institutional investors and most people with a lot of money will avoid commodities like crazy, big time. And you know, like I stated from day one, a little common sense. Every single institutional investor out there, conehead that has a Series 7, Series 6 or whatever, been in business as a broker for 20, you know, people in business as brokers for 25 years, go broke. They're idiots too. You know, a lot of these people with a lot of initials after their names, they're salesmen. The more initials you get after the name, the more you freaking polish your delivery system, the more people buy into it. But a lot of those people are just working for a commission because they want people to invest with them. So, you know, if they knew how to invest, why the hell would they tell, you know, why would they even be bothering with that? Just invest your own money and do it, right? Well... Actually, I wish I sold my silver on April 28th. I wish I was paying attention to some other people because that information was public and that would have been a very smart thing. But right now, I think it's going to play out. I mean, it's got like the, the three-year the three -year rise. It was pulling back, did like the triple top, triple bottom back in uh, 2008 with the gold and finally they did QE and things started taking off again. The European situation, actually QE2, was mainly propping up European banks. You know? So I was looking at the euro. It's down almost 119 again. It's like 120-something. But it falls too low. In effect, our, our QE props up Europe. They can't let Europe go all the way. They're not. So the metals are going to start rising again. They're gonna actually going to... These guys don't have everything under... Their, even the people on the top that are extremely smart, they don't have everything under control 100%. Actually, I'm getting rid of my brokerage accounts probably in a year. You know? I figure the stuff goes up, I'm pulling it out. Going credit union. The hell with it. Because I think there's going to be something going wrong with our wonderful financial system. I don't actually trust it either. So, but like I said, I've been, I you know... I'll give you some crazy things out there, but that's where people make money. But, you know, this is not a game that saves the middle class. This is actually gold and silver is where the middle class is going to get slaughtered. But not right now. It's going to be later on. Silver's probably going to go up $200 an ounce. or Maybe it's going to go up to five or $800 an ounce. I don't know. It depends on how much inflation we have. But it depends on that. And I don't think we're going... We're not going into Zimbabwe inflation, but the... There's a number of things that can happen. And I can see the only way all this is going to play out in the world with this economic downturn throughout the world, just like it happened in the 30s, is a world war. Now, if the United States is on a losing side of it somewhat or it doesn't go that great, our currency is going to get trashed to the max. So this is more of a long-range thing. You'd be better off keeping physical gold and silver. There's no doubt about it. So... Um, but you know, I don't know this for a fact, but I think, uh, even this year, you're going to see gold hit a, a record high, 2,000, or something like that. I'm not just saying that. It's going to be the same thing that screwed it up, that screwed up the dollar last year. The budgets, they can't agree upon the budgets. They won't be able to agree upon the budgets. It's politics time. It's election year. They're going to stall right to the hill. They're going to say Obama is doing this and that. I'm not getting into this Democrat, Republican thing. And then the rating agencies are going to come out and say, oh, the dollar looks like is, uh, you know, they're going to just say things, even if they don't bring it down. But that will bring gold up. So it's a little common sense. And, you know, I was always the guy in the background feeding these people. 
the ideas that made them the money. Believe me, it was like a non-secure job. You know, even though I worked for them for years, it's almost like you had to be, you had to know everything at every freaking given time on anything. So, just playing my own game and I'm just saying my own thoughts, but remember, the experts were wrong, weren't they? I mean, even the institutional experts and everything else. 2020, a little going backwards, right? But over, you know, if you would have told the experts, all the experts, I'm dumping all my money in gold and silver back in 2000, 2001, they would have said you're on crack or something, right? Now, today, it looks like the bubble's way the hell up there, right? You're looking at the graph. But not exactly in inflationary dollars. We got more inflation going on than this government statistics say. And that's kind of reflected in the price of gold. See, so gold isn't really going up. We just got more inflation going on. All they got to do is calculate the figures the way they used to. They don't need to get into anything fancy. Just calculate the figures of inflation the way they used to. Then put that next to gold. Gold looks pretty flat. That's what's going on. The fiat dollar is going down. So they're not going to be able to hold that together. So just hang on to gold and silver. It's got a ways to go. The middle class will dump into it maybe later on, a couple of years, two, three years from now, when they start seeing, look, it's going up some more. That's when they're going to dump into it. They're going to get slaughtered. And thanks to the silver pump and dumpers. But right now, they're all shut up. They're not saying nothing. That's why I know it's probably a good time that it's probably near the bottom or around the bottom right now because they all shut up. Later on, when it goes and gets up to 50, 60, boy, they're going to be saying 100. I don't know if it's going to go to 100, but I'm going to start dumping this stuff around 60 and 70. Some of it. And, you know, that'll be a pretty good chunk of change. He's doing a little bit of it, so who cares? That's what I want to play.